Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with a number, uh, another Carve December video, which will be mostly fast forwarded. But I went through my doodle book and I just and I um, took post it notes this morning and looked at some of the designs of which I really like. And I'm thinking that I would like to try one of these circles in here, not sure which one yet. Possibly, um, maybe, <laughs> not really sure, maybe one of these. I don't know, let me look through this and make sure I have the right page. Yeah. I also thought about doing one of these hearts. I think I might do one of these hearts but that'll be later, but I'm, I'm in a circle mood today, so I think it will be, well. It'll be one of these. You'll see when I fast forward through it. So you know, first part is I've got to trace the circles, then I need to cut the rubber, which is going to be a little tricky. I may have to cut it into a square and then carve the circle into the square. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Here we go. Okay, so no cute, no Christmas music. I know people get annoyed by it in videos. Um, so this is just me on four times fast forward, showing you that I'm trying to find a good template to put on the rubber. I decide to do it on the paper, not directly on the rubber. And I'm using a template that I use all the time for everything. And I really like it because it has the um, top and bottom tick marks and on the sides so that you can do a perfect intersection in the middle. So there I am doing it on the paper. I'm fiddling around with the templates because um, I'm trying to find the proper side to make different um, circles inside the big circle for the carving. Some of them are too big, some are too small. I needed something that was a little more equally spaced. I did the best I could. So I'm looking back at my reference, which is one of the circles on the in the doodle book. I'm taking the number two pencil and I'm making it darker so that when I lay it upside down on the rubber, it will leave a good um, copy of what's on the paper on the rubber so I can carve. I know some people are really good and they write right on the rubber. I am not that good. I just cannot seem to make stuff work when I do it that way. It's lopsided. It's just, I'm better off tracing a template and doing it on the paper and then rubbing rubbing that onto the, I have speedy carve. Um, I take a, um, uh, shoot, I can't remember what I used. Anyway, I take something, and I rub it on the uh, paper, a bone folder. I take the bone folder and rub it on the back side of the paper when the design is turned upside down on the speed carve, and that's what leaves the good um, graphite marks on it, so you can use that as a guide. Some people will also take a pen and redraw it on there, do colors to know where to carve, where not to carve. Now I want, I have a limited amount of rubber. This is a new piece, but I want to make it last all lot, all month long. So I decided to do a mirror image. There's the bone folder. There I am rubbing it. And when I pick it up, you will see the, um, the impression. It looks pretty good. Now I'm going to cut it down to a smaller size because I'm, I'm going to make this the mirror image of the circle, uh, simply because I want to make my rubber last all, all month long. I have flex cut. I have the kind of handles that are permanently fixed. I mean the uh, gouges that are permanently fixed in the wood. And then um, I do have four or five speedball carvers, you know, that have the interchangeable blade and keep the blades inside the handle. I have four or five of those. But speedy carve, these are more fine gouges and the larger ones that will go around the edges and take out more rubber. I use the uh, speedy car for those. But this stuff is very fine. These are very fine gouges. 
They're the, I think they're the V gouges or the scoops. They do them in millimeters, I don't know. But I really like them. I like the fine ones because I think it gives a nice cut for you to use as a guide. And they make great nicks in the Speedy Carve if you're just trying to make like a little tick mark or a little dot on something. They're really good for that because they're very fine so you don't get carried away. And I have a tendency to get carried away. And I'm sorry if this volume is too high for you. There's a distinct difference between the beginning clip and the end clip because the middle stuff is voiceover and the first clip and the last clip are me recording it while I'm doing it. And I tried, I this is my second time to record it and the first time you could barely hear me talking so I turned the volume up on my computer and now you have the option to lower my voice when I do it. I'm really sorry it's very loud but before I couldn't hear it at all. So now I'm just following the lines where I think I want there to be gaps where color will show through. I have no earthly idea what I'm doing, <laughs> but I'm having a good time. And frankly, that's all that really matters to me at this point. All right, so I gouged in the middle because that's going to be the part that I use to figure out where the other half is placed. Here's the first stamping. So I can see if I need to make adjustments. There's the other half so I can line it up to make it match the other side. Not too bad. Uh, there's some adjustments that need to be made. And that's what you're going to see me do now is make any adjustments that need to be made that I don't like from the first stamping. And this is where people um, tend to get kind of crazy. I know I do. You try to make it perfect and then you end up nicking something and then when you turn it over and stamp it you can see where your mistake is so you know I think the best thing about doing this is know when to say when obviously I didn't follow my own advice because now <laughs> I'm carving away more and then wait till you see what I do next so this gouge is better for large large stretches of getting rid of stuff than the flex cuts that I have. So I'm trying to get the black ink off of there because I don't want it on my stuff. I want more color when I when I use it so I'm trying to get as much of the rubber, the black colored rubber off that I can. This is where I make mistakes. I get too carried away here. You'll see. All right, we're going to stamp it again. And see, now I have a lot more color. So if I use it on a jelly plate, there'll be more of the color showing through. So carving it wasn't enough. Now I'm just going to flat cut it off. Now, I'm got, am I going to stamp it again? No, I'm going to carve off any of the black ink that I see that's left around the edges so it doesn't show up when I stamp it again. I mostly use these rubber stamps on jelly plates. And I, when I'm done using them, I will wet them, go in the kitchen and take a, an old toothbrush and some Dawn dishwashing liquid or whatever you want to use, and then I scrub them off because the paint embeds in the indentations and then when you do the jelly plate it doesn't give it a good enough impression. Alright so I did the middle section so I know where to line it up when I stamp again to make sure one side matches the other. That one was good. So I'm just I, I'm looking to make sure there's no little leftover pieces left of the black because I don't want to see it.
And this is where the uh, carried away part comes. <laughs> I'm just hacking away at this poor snap. Let's stamp it again. All right, so I'm trying to control myself when I use too much uh, and not use too much paint when I stamp my rubber stamps on the jelly plate. I need to let them dry. I need to use less paint and let the paint dry a little bit before I stamp it because I want the paint to stick to the speedy carb. So when I lift it up, it gives a better impression. I get impatient and I don't wait long enough. And you will see that in the print when it comes up. And you can actually see it on the jelly plate that the bottom circle seems to be one of the better ones. The second one up from the bottom, not so good because I was too much of a hurry. The longer I let it sit there, the better it gets because now the paint is really sticking to the speedy carve. And I like it better when it does that. Yeah, I'm going to dry it off by an envelope. <laughs> you use very thin amounts of paint to go over it. You don't have to let this dry necessarily as much as you probably should the first layer. So here's my first pull. Voila. Okay, so here's the recap. This is the book. And this is what um, I started with was doing the circle on a piece of paper with the guide and then cut the paper, well, put the, did the pencil on the rubber and cut it in half, I cut it in half first, then did the rubber. And here's are my stages of development. This was the first one. I think this is second. And then this is a little bit off. I mean, it looks like it's off, but it is off. It's a little less than a circle. Here are the others that I tried it, tested it on. I love the way it looks. Not crazy about the inside so much as I am the outside and how it comes together. Maybe more very fine lines and not so much gouging out. Right, so here is one of the first ones that I did. Or second, was it second? Yeah, this was the first one I did where I put the gold down first and then the blue over it. Nope. Yep. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> It'll be in the video before this. Anyway, so there's those. Oh, yeah, because he, I took this where this came from right there. Then um, I did this as a mop-up piece. I had the yellow where I rolled it off, or the gold, and then I went ahead and took um, some off the blue piece that was a little bit messy and just stamped it like that. This is the back side. I'm going to stamp, I think, black on this side. See which one I like better. Then I did it with this color, and I don't like it because you can't... Well, see, looks better on the camera than it does in person. You can barely see any of this in person. It's very dark. But on the camera, it looks good. I'm happy with the way it turned out, except for I can't see anything when I look at it just when the light's off. You can't see any of the details or anything. Okay, so that's it for day number six. I'm still a little behind, but I'm not sweating bullets over it. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks, everybody. Bye.